Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I've built my own computers, and I've had computers uh, purchased as just, that's what they are, this is what they come with, there you go. So I've, uh, I've had it both ways, I've tried it both ways, and uh, you know, my current machine was sent to me as is. Uh, it's constructed very well, talked about it recently, the AMD Spider system on the Phenom platform. Uh, great system. I, I don't think I could tweak it that much, would want to tweak it that much, because right now all I need is for this computer to work. And you know, Vista's on it right now, so I'm already you know, pushing its uh, limits and limitations. So the question is, is, do you prefer to build your own computers or to just buy them right off the shelf as they are? Maybe with a little bit of tweaking, you know, changing something here, changing something there. What's your preference? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we have a top five list for building a computer. These are tips I have submitted by the username Fatal. That's what he's known as, at least in the chat room at live.perillo.com. Pretty good solid list of tips, and I'm sure you're really de ready leaving comments right now on how you go and, and, and what you choose to do uh, when it comes to your own computers. Number one, know where to shop. This is a very good one. Oftentimes, you can find many deals online rather than retail stores for computer parts. And uh, there are some places online that have got great deals for various computer components. If you're creating a budget for your computer, take into consideration the required components you need in order for that computer to run. For example, don't buy an extra fan that's going to cool down your system if you don't really need it to run your computer. Instead, buy some RAM to increase the performance of the computer itself. Fair enough. Now, there are people who are, are constantly typing, uh, typing new egg in the chat room. People apparently love new egg, which is fine. I'll support it. But right now, uh, I'm retooling with uh, a, a, another one of the chat room moderators, Alan, or SC Thor. Uh, we're retooling tagjag.com. So if you like new egg, that's cool. But we are linking specifically to new egg discounts and coupons for certain searches. So let's say you're searching for AMD or Intel or um, Antec, whatever it happens to be, you can go to tagjag.com forward slash Antec, forward slash AMD, forward slash Intel, forward slash keyword, and it will return a list of results that have the best prices, but more importantly, we're also looking for coupons and discounts for those brands as well. Or if it's, even if it's computer fans, computer fans, you can look for that too, and we will send you the best list at tagjag.com. So it's fine to like the other sites, but we've done all the work for you. Number two, save your money. Sometimes you don't need to buy everything for a new system. If your hard drive is running fine on your current computer, don't go out and purchase a new hard drive. Often, you can find things such as hard drives and use it for your new system that you're going to build. The only thing you need to make sure is that it will work with your new system's motherboard. Interfaces are kind of important that way. For example, if you do have a spare video card that you're willing to use for your new system, make sure it's PCI or PCIe. Uh, and I think that's a, a good, in fact, a video card, PCI video cards. I haven't seen a PCI in a while. I think you may have met uh, AGP, possibly. I don't know. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. But the point is well taken. Uh, I have recycled components many times. Um, you know, keyboards, mice, uh, even the innards in a computer, hard drives, a great point to make. Sometimes uh, removable media, uh, the uh, you know, CD drive or well, optical drive, floppy drive in some cases. Uh, I've had PCI cards that expand the USB and FireWire capabilities that I was able to swap in and out uh, in, you know, as long as I had an extra PCI slot inside. So really good point. Number three, cases. The case of a computer is what holds the components inside. That is your computer. But what sits around the motherboard is the case, it's the, the chassis, the case. You want to make sure you're going to have enough space to place everything inside. You may want to go, usually mid-towers are what you want if you're going to build a regular computer. I don't know how you define regular, but you may want to go with a bigger size than mid-tower if you're going to use RAID or add more hard drives, you know, for the extra space. He recommends buying the case first, so in a case of a motherboard would not fit, you could possibly return the motherboard and get a new one. Very, very important. In fact, I bet you there have been times you've opened up a computer case and, and, and thought to yourself, how the heck did they cram everything in there? I can't even get in there. It's nice to, to be able to maneuver, you know, in and out. You know, and that's another thing you got to keep in mind, and I don't know if he's mentioned this, but I'm going to throw it in here too. He may get to it in a second. Well, actually, I'll, I'm going to hold off on the tip. I'll add it to his number five. But first, number four, power supplies. 
In my opinion, many people do not realize that they need a good power supply. Many people do not see a reason they need to worry about getting a good one. However, when the computer keeps shutting down for no reason, you might want to think about it. Power supplies are very important because it's going to control all the components inside of it, or it's going to give them power. It's the power supply. It supplies power. It's okay. It doesn't get easier than that. So uh, you got to make sure uh, you're going with one that's going to be able to support as much power as you're going to throw at it. If you have a top-of-the-line system with two video cards with SLI, four gigs of RAM, quad-core processor, two 500 gigabyte hard drives, you're going to need a pretty solid power supply. However, if you're not going to, or if you're going to stick with the onboard video or something along the lines of a lower-end machine, you may not want to purchase a power supply that is over and beyond your needs. So measure how much power is going to be drawn and make sure you get one that maybe grows with you a little, but not so far over that you're never going to reach that limitation. Number five cooling your system. Cooling your computer also goes along the lines of having a good power supply. Your PC can overheat if you have too much heat coming from within your system. And everything that's doing something is giving off heat. There are many ways to cool your system. First one is to purchase fans, case fans, which will allow you to create a good airflow so you can cool the system. I suggest placing a case fan in the front of the case, taking in air, and then place another case in the back so it's blowing air out. A good airflow is good for keeping your computer cool. Second thing you can do from preventing the system from overheating is adding a good heat sink. A heat sink can cool your processor. That's what it's designed for. It's very important. It dissipates the heat, essentially. It's very important if you're going to overclock your system's processor. And the last and final thing you could or should do and must do if you're going to run a high-end system is to purchase a water cooling system. By the way, I'm going to tease the fact that we've got a top five list of water cooling tips coming up, just so you know. So look for that in our YouTube channel. This will help the system be cool a lot better than just regular case fans. I don't recommend getting this if you're just going to run a basic machine, but for higher end machines with more video cards, this is a must. Now, this is my addendum to the cooling your system. This is what people don't think about. Remember a couple seconds ago, I was talking about opening a case and said it was just seeing a jumble of things and just cramming things in there? That's bad. It's just as important for you to keep those wires and cables streamlined inside your case. Now you may think, well, wait, I'm never going to look inside the case. doesn't matter because it's impeding airflow. And if you do not have good airflow in your system, it's going to overheat. And then a lot of people who complain about, well, my system keeps locking up. Well, I, my first guess is when a system locks up, well, it could be bad RAM in some cases, and it could be the fact that it's overheating. And in many cases, to stop your computer from overheating before you know going as far as uh, we're talking about here when building a system, if you've had a system for a while and it, it continues to freeze just randomly, you just don't know when, it could be overheating. Open up that case, take a can of compressed hair, hair, compressed hair, I have compressed hair. No, take a can of compressed hair air, hold it upright, squeeze off a few rounds, blow out the dust bunnies, and chances are your system will be happier. It'll be cooler because you will have eliminated some restrictions, possibly fans getting gunked up. You know, Clean out the dust from your system every once in a while. It's a good thing to do. Hope this list has a remedy with people has some remedy with people who have had confusion and or have been worried about building their own computer. If you're second guessing yourself into building one, do it. It's a great learning experience and will help you in the long run if you're going to fix hardware problems. One more thing you should go and start to build is to make sure you have some samples of computers to look at so you know where each component goes. This will help you a lot when placing things around. Um, that w is a great tip in and of itself. Uh, most people learn by doing. In fact, that's how I prefer to teach. I, you know, I'll, I'll nudge you a little bit, but I, I much prefer that you actually try something yourself, and then when you run into problems, then you come and say, well, what was going on? What did I miss? Um, anyway, regardless, this is a, a great top five list of things to keep in mind when you're building a computer. I mean, this is not a comprehensive list, uh, but that's okay. Good guidelines to go by. I love getting your top five lists. I get uh, probably now... I'd say close to about five to ten a day, which means I can't keep up with them, which is great. It's awesome. I love having this kind of content to share back with the community. Good stuff. Whether you got a top five list related to technology, hardware, software, internet, or something that's related to life in general, life, lifestyle, whatever. Whatever you have in your head, if you're an expert, if you have some knowledge in something, maybe it's your career, your background, your degree, whatever, send it along. I'd love to share it with the rest of the community at YouTube or, of course, at live.perillo.com. That's where you could go when you want to chat. 
and uh, that's uh, that's what they're doing right now. Now I, I know you probably f completely forgot what I just said, didn't you? You have no idea where you need to go, even though you're reading the chat right now. You have no idea how to get there, do you? Even though I've got the link right underneath, you can't click it really, but the link is underneath the uh, sponsor logos here. I don't know. I, I have a feeling I'm going to need some uh, help in you know really you know giving you a nice little succinct you know package point. So, Cat, you want to? Help take this video out. I'd love to, Chris. Hey, everybody, we'd love to have you join us anytime, day or night. You will find us typically talking tech, or maybe we'll even have a Christmas sing along. Come check it out in one place and one place only live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.